sticking around for the lightning round talk. This is the last one of the entire forum. And I think we can all agree the first two have been quite wonderful. Uh, if, uh, if all six of you could come up to the front, I see five at the moment. Um, if the sixth one could come up and sit up here at the front, that would be wonderful. Uh, just a quick refresher, one to two minute presentation. The, there are no slides, there are no questions, and I hope that you all find these students after the fact at poster sessions and or in the hallways and discuss with them further about their science if you are interested. So with that, I think we can go ahead and get started with uh, Sucrit. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks to the organizers for letting me speak to you here. My name is Sukrit Ranjan. I'm a graduate student at the Center for Astrophysics in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My other hat is in exoplanets and astrobiology, but I'm here to talk to you about a project I'm involved with on near-Earth objects, NEOs. And specifically, our team is interested in the low delta V NEOs, those NEOs that are energetically accessible to get to. And we're interested in those. Um, those NEOs are targets of interest both for sample return missions as well as in situ research utilization and a bunch of other applications. What our team is trying to do is to take, uh, take what models of the NEO populations exist and compare them to the existing NEO catalogs and try to gain a first approximation to, uh, to, to the question, how many of these appealing targets, how many of these low delta V NEOs are left to find? How many low hanging fruit are there out there to pick? And we think we've gotten a first approximation as to this. And I'd love to uh, discuss our methods with you and get your input and uh, your feedback and your criticism. If you, would if you would like to talk about this, please come to poster 2A. Love to get your feedback. Thanks very much. Hello, my name is Jamie Zelay, and I'm going into my fifth year in grad school at University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, so I am working on the LADI mission, the Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, and I worked on the dust detector uh, for that mission. And just like any other instrument that's ever been sent to space in the history of mankind, you go up there, you think you know what you're going to see, and then we see all kinds of wonderful things that we never thought we would see. Uh, so in this instance, what my talk will be about is we'd be going along getting one dust particle, two particles a minute, and then all of a sudden we see 10, 100, these huge bursts of particles out of seemingly nowhere. And when you look into the timing of that, it turns out a lot of them happen when there are meteor streams smashing into the side of the moon. And we realized that this is a great opportunity to let Mother Nature perform an experiment that, uh, on a scale that we just can't reproduce. So that being, take a big body the size of the moon and shoot a bunch of stuff at it and see how it responds. And so if you'd like to hear more about that, uh, come to my talk tomorrow afternoon in the other room, and uh, I'll be flushing that out. Again, my name is Jamie Zelay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rachel Slank, and I am a master's student working with Jose Hurtado at the University of Texas at El Paso. I, my field of science is in planetary geology, and I'm currently working on finding lunar lava tubes and other subsurface cavities. I'm accomplishing this using geo, uh, sorry, ground penetrating radar, thermal dynamics, and um, numerical data. I hope that we will be able to not only potentially find these and categorize them, but also have hope of using them later on as a potential habitat, protecting uh, lunar colonists from bombardment and solar radiation. Um, unfortunately, I do not have a poster at this meeting. However, if you'd like to come talk to me about my work or anything else, I'd be more than happy to talk to you. And thanks. Hi, everyone. My name is Takako Kuroyamari. I'm from Japan. Uh, I'm in the graduate school at Nihon, uh, of physics at Nihon University. Uh, I was a NASA Ames NASA Academy 2012. Uh, I work at MLSI with Dr. Brian Day. My project is LIAM. It's Lunar Impact Monitoring Event. Um, NASA needs to some uh, many videos of lunar impact flash uh, with Dali mission. Uh, my project is organization in J Japan, amateur astronomers, and they observe the moon. Uh, my poster number is 31B. 
Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Alessandra Springman. I think some of you know me as Sandy. I've been working at Arecibo Observatory for the last two years doing planetary radar studies of asteroids. I don't have a poster or a talk here, but I'm friendly. I don't bite. Come talk to me. I'll talk to, uh, I can talk about binary studies of asteroids if you're familiar with asteroid 1998 QE2 that flew by last summer. Got a wonderful shape model of that. It's about 3.2 kilometers across. It has an 800 meter moon. It's tidally locked, just like our Earth and Moon, so I've been working on that, looking at radar, looking at light curves, looking at thermal models of that. Also been looking at polarization properties of about 500 near-Earth asteroids, so looking at surface roughness on the wavelength scale of about my hand. So that's very relevant when it comes to start putting humans on asteroids. I've been working on a couple other projects at Arecibo Observatory. We have wonderful images of asteroid 2014 HQ124, some of you might know it as the beast. Really, it's a beauty. So we have some great images of that. We have some other comets and some other great stuff we've been doing at Arecibo. So come find me. My name's Alessandra Springman, or Sandy. I'll be around for the rest of the week, including at a Thursday. Thank you. Great. So thank you very much. And uh, can we please give all our speakers one more round of applause and all of the student speakers for this whole week. I think we can all agree that uh, hopefully the planetary community is in good hands for the future. Uh,